Okay, I wanted to have another go. I didn't expect anybody to be um, actually present in the uh, last live lesson, but there was quite a few people on that, that seemed to be on uh, leaving leaving comments and things in the last lesson. Um, I wanted to just uh, check really about the camera and things like that because I can see I've already looked at it on YouTube. I've got it in front of me that it was a bad uh, picture. Um, it should be a better picture now. I've given it a rub with a bit of cloth, and and hopefully that that that's done the trick. I mean, what, what does it look like, guys? Can you can you comment and tell me if it's looking good? If it's looking any better? Um, please tell me if it if it's worse or if it's better. Um, somebody asked about the model of phone that I'm using. I'm using an iPhone uh, 6 SE, I think it is. And so if anybody has any tips about things that I can do, um, let me know. Um, I'm pretty new to this particular um, technology, but it's good, is it? I can see somebody's put nice. Hi. Um, so if anybody has, is it better, uh, Marcelo? Is it better than it was before? Guys, let me know if it looks better. I mean, obviously you have a close up of my face, which might not look so good, but um, it, I hope that the quality of the picture is, is better. Nice, excellent, I'm glad I'm looking uh, pretty. You should say handsome for men and pretty for, for girls. Um, so uh, do, does anybody have any questions? I might as well answer some questions now I'm here. If anybody has some questions, I could even use the board if I could get the phone to stand up. Thank you. Um, I, if there are any questions that you have, now is the time to ask because I'm here, I'm ready. I don't have another lesson for at least an hour and a half. So uh, what questions do you have? <coughs> no questions? If there are no questions, I'm just gonna check to see if Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I would love to actually. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with Spinoza, who's perhaps my favorite philosopher at this moment of my life. Um, and uh, yeah, I would love to do uh, some work on Spinoza again. I w I've obviously done a lot of other work with ancient Greek philosophy. And um, I think I've got something like nine or ten lessons on the ancient Greeks. In particular, I really like the pre-Socratic philosophers because I think they did a lot about the philosophy of science back in those days. And I think it would uh, our scientists would be uh, they would greatly benefit from looking at um, the pre-Socratic philosophers and trying to understand what exactly they were saying about the world and how it can logically be constructed. Um, how it can, how it logically works. There's a lot to learn from the pre-Socratic philosophers and scientists would do well to look at those ancient philosophers. But I would love to do some more work on Spinoza, so I might do a lesson on Spinoza possibly. Um, that's a very good question, Birol. I hope I can, uh, um, uh, I hope I can pronounce your name correctly. Um, so uh, I recommend that you get students to retell each and every class. Um, I like students to spend most of their time talking in classes and not me talking in classes. If students want to hear me talk, they can watch one of the many hundreds of videos which I have on YouTube. So during my lessons, the student does by far the majority of the talking. Um, they should retell the TV show and I should be just correcting them really and making, uh, making corrections for any mistakes which they happen to make. Um, I think that this is the best method for teaching English. I think students should spend a lot of the time talking. Um, a dictionary for pre-intermediate level. Um, there are lots of dictionaries around. Um, I mean, I tend to use Oxford and, and Cambridge, but there are lots and lots of different dictionaries around. A student book for pre-intermediate level, I would recommend English File. I think English File is the best uh, student book. Um, Uh, you want to bring your students to the UK, yeah? Well, of course, there's, there, there's plenty of opportunities to bring them to the UK. I'm not actually far from London. I mean, if uh, people wanted uh, to have some extra lessons or something, um, I, I would be able to give them lessons, especially in the summer where I have a bit more free time because people go on holiday. 
Um, so yeah, it's it's possible. Get in touch with me if you're interested in um, uh, lessons over here when the when the students come over. So any uh, particular grammar questions or? My accent is from um, Southend. Um, it's uh, in Essex, so it's called estuary English very often. Um, I suppose the way I talk in, in lessons, though, I try not to talk in the local accent. Oh, hi, Otto. There's one of my students. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I, I have an estuary English accent, but uh, during classes I try and speak with um, received pronunciation, as they call it, BBC English, if you prefer, um, a kind of golden standard of in English accents. <laughs> um, but I suppose when I'm down the pub with friends, I use a lot more um, estuary English, which would involve um, dropping your T's, also known as the, the glottal stop, yeah, like bottle instead of bottle. Um, that that kind of accent, I'll, I'll use that accent when I'm down the pub with friends or when I'm playing poker or something like this. Okay, any other questions out there? Because I'll, I'll finish this soon if there are no other questions. I really want to check the quality of the video because I want, I've got a few hours free and... Can we use present tense after wish? No, I don't think so. I can't think of a time we can. I wish you have a good time. No, I, I, I want you to have a good time. You don't say I wish. You can say I wish you a good time. You can say it like that, but that's not present tense. There is no verb after wish in that. You can use wish in present tense. I wish is present tense, but after wish, it's got to be past simple or past perfect. And what was that about supposed to and should? Into is used for directional movement, and within just means inside, but into is directional, so you go into a place. Um, how to improve writing for FCE? Um, practice. I mean, really, how to improve anything, the answer is practice. Um, so you need to write a lot. But uh, there are some things you can do. You can memorise some typical expressions um, which we use in writing uh, in written form. So things like in addition, moreover, furthermore, they're all things which you need to remember for writing, certainly. On the other hand, watch my videos on linking words. There's loads of stuff there for writing. You need good linking expressions for writing. Um, okay, somebody just mentioned something else about philosophy. I suppose I might do Nietzsche. Um, I don't know about Jung, really, um, but I might do Nietzsche um, in future. He's someone who I'm certainly very familiar with. I've read a lot of his books. Um, um, I consider my accent to be standard. I'm sorry, Otto, I missed what you put there because there's a lot of different messages come up. Um, what's the difference between supposed to and should? You are supposed to do something and you should do something. They're pretty much the same. I can't see much. No, nothing uh, strikes me as... I don't think there is any difference, really, between those two, supposed to and should. Um, thank you very much, Birol. I appreciate it. Speaking practice, just like writing, it's practice. Practice makes perfect, we say. Repetition is how you learn anything. It's how you learn to ride a bike, and it's also how you learn to speak English. You do it, you do it again, you do it again, and then you do it a thousand more times, and you don't forget it. Okay, any other uh, comments? I can see there's more people coming here. It's really quite uh, interesting to see it for the first time. Um, I speak English and uh, some Russian as well. So two. I suppose I can remember a very, very, very small amount of French from school. Um, what about mixed conditionals? You use them when, you very often use them when you say, if I were you, because usually in that expression, if I were you, if you then refer to the past, you still say, if I were you and not if I had been you. So if I were you, I wouldn't have done that. That's one situation when um, we very often use mixed conditionals. Compressor sets would be the answer there. Um, um, yeah, I've just started doing quite a few lessons on clauses. Um, I would like to do some more as well myself. 
but I have a lesson on participle clauses which will come out in the next couple of days about the importance of a comma in participle clauses and how the comma actually completely changes the meaning it, when you add a comma or you take it away. So there'll be something on participle clauses coming very soon. Um, clauses are a bit annoying. I, if you watch my comma video, you can see that I make a mistake in that because I put I write a very clear main or independent clause up on the board and I write next to it subordinate clause so it's easy to make mistakes with clauses um, as to the passive voice is it common to use the perfect continuous tenses when speaking um, there is no passive for present perfect continuous it doesn't exist there is no passive um, it's there is no have been been doing um, it, it doesn't exist but have been doing is a very common English expression yes if you're asking do we use all the tenses yes we do the answer to that is very simple yes we use all the tenses future perfect continuous is very rare will have been doing I think that one is extremely rare but the rest of them yes we use them all the time What's the difference between sort it out and work it out? Sort something out normally means organise something. Work something out means figure something out. It means calculate, when you calculate something. Where do you come off plus gerund? I heard it in a film. You can say come off of it, uh, or come off it, just come off it, in fact, as Mia Otto discovered recently. Come off it just means I don't believe you. That's ridiculous. You're pulling my leg. Come off it. Okay, come off it just means that's ridiculous, ridiculous. Could you please explain the difference between may and might? Um, well, there is a, a complicated uh, difference which I could tell you about. Um, may is the preterite form of might, a bit like can and could. Now, if you want to learn more about that, check Wikipedia where it will tell you about preterite forms. Or maybe might is the preterite form of may. Um, yes, they used to be connected, uh, may and might, just like can and could. Nowadays, I'd say that might is informal and may is formal. That's the only difference. But they used to be connected like can and could. Um, and in fact, shall and should used to be one's the preterite form, one's the ordinary modal form. I can't remember which one's which, but there is some interesting things to say about preterite forms. I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'll have to check on Oxford, which is what you should do, by the way, guys, if you're ever not sure how to pronounce something. Preterite is a word that I've never heard anybody say before. I've only read it. And when you read words for the first time, um, obviously you don't know exactly how they're pronounced. So I will quickly check how to say preterite. Preterite actually means, according to Oxford Dictionary, expressing a past action or state. Oh, I'll need to put on my earphone to hear how this one is actually pronounced. See if I'm saying it correctly. Preterite, <laughs> not preterite, preterite. So preterite forms express a past action or state. It comes from the Latin preteritus gone by, past participle of preterere... Ah. I'm, I'm not a very good Latin speaker. Otto will have to help you there. He's a good Latin speaker. Um, any more questions? I'll wait a few more seconds. If there are no more questions, I'll finish. Really, this has just been a test to see if I can uh, get a good picture. And hola. Yes, preterito, like in Spanish. There we go. Could you explain the difference between goal and aim? That's quite a hard question, actually, goal and aim. Aim has uh, connections to aiming a gun. So your aim is where you target, where you put the target of the gun. Um, goal is just your general goals in life. But, I mean, sometimes they can be exactly the same, certainly. Um, no, I don't play online poker. I play offline poker. I think online poker, it's not fun when you can't see your opponent's face. Preterito. Yeah, is it with the stress on the middle of the second syllable? Preterito. I'm not a Spanish speaker. You put a comma before which um, in non-defining relative clauses. Watch my video on relative clauses and all the information's on that video. The difference between speak and talk is on my speak, talk, say video, and uh, they, they are different. Yeah, you talk about, they're very close though. You speak about something, you talk about something. Um, 
you normally speak about if you're in a room of la- a large room a, a, a room with a large group of people you would say speak about but talk about sounds to me more like a conversation involving two people but please watch the video on sp- speak and talk uh, if you want to know exactly what's uh, what's the difference there okay any other questions I'm sorry to just direct you to other videos but you'll get a, a much fuller answer than me answering it um, spontaneously. If you go to that video, you'll find a much uh, more detailed answer. Um, any more questions, please? This is your, this is your, uh, almost your rabbit hole sends there regards. Who is that? <laughs> it's not Steve, is it? Favourite novel? Um, I really like a novel called Auto de Fe by Elias Canetti. I haven't read it for a long time, but I remember it was a fantastic novel. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's that's a really good novel. I would recommend it to anybody. Um, a household name means someone who is famous in that sphere. Um, someone who's really famous in that sphere. I prefer to prefer plus two plus infinitive is fine or prefer plus gerund is fine. It, there, there's no difference really in meaning either before between I prefer doing and I prefer to do. They are the same. A bit like I like doing and I like to do. Well, uh, every verb has uh, either an infinitive or a gerund. There's a very bit. I've just mentioned speak and talk. Please watch my video about speak and talk. Um, I don't know if it's better he w- wins the game. Neither of those sentences sound, sounded very good there, Marcelo. And I missed the comment below. Sorry about that. I missed them as they come up on my phone if they come up quite quickly. Um, but neither of those sentences sounded correct to me, Marcelo. I'm sorry about that. Uh, you'll have to try again <laughs> because they've already disappeared. Maybe I can put it up on YouTube. Perhaps if I... Maybe I'll be able to watch my own video my own video live. As I say, I'm still getting used to this. What do you recommend to understand proper use of prepositions? Um, practice. <laughs> uh, you have to just keep practicing. It's the same in all languages. They all have a lot of prepositions and they're very complicated. Um, no, I wouldn't say it is. You ask any native speaker the difference between due to and because of and they will not know the difference. I guarantee it. So, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> I wouldn't worry about the difference between due to and because of, unless you're doing an exam like GMAT, in which case you need to know the difference. Um, if and when are very different conjunctions, I mean, they mean different things. Me, when means at that, at which time, whereas if doesn't, means on condition that. What's the meaning of one way or another? Um, it means, you know, in, we'll find a way. How about copying somebody writing? Mm, I wouldn't recommend that. I would recommend you writing and doing it lots of times. If so, should I use stress? Um, I wouldn't stress the difference between due, due to and because of. Is there any site for... There probably is with etymology. Um, I think there's lots of good videos about Cockney accents. Try the Learn English with Papa Teach Me video. That one's really good. I know you have a lesson about... I missed that. What book do you recommend to master grammar? Grammar is uncountable. Don't put an S on it. Um, The Raymond Murphy book, which everybody knows. All English teachers use it. Um, Use the Raymond Murphy book. It's a fantastic book. It's called Intermediate Grammar. But if you want advanced grammar, try the uh, the Martin Hewings Advanced English Grammar. It's also very good. Um, I would use one of those two. It means I don't care. I'm not bothered means it doesn't bother me. I don't care. Who cares? I'm not I'm not bothered. It doesn't bother me. It's all the same to me. Um probably not because I don't see it as useful for my students. I wouldn't do something on archaic grammar. I don't see any use for the students. Um, fit means it's the right size. Suit means that it goes with your eyes or goes with your hair or it's it's it looks good on you. Suit means fit means it's comfortable. It's the right size. Don't really understand that. What's the difference between vile and wild? Wild means out in nature, and vile means disgusting, awful. Fit out is quite rare, but it is a phrasal verb, and it normally means that you completely um, 
fit out. Cool. That's a hard one. I'll have to come back to that one. Bring about and come about. They are different, yeah, because one's active, one's passive. You know, if, if you, if something comes about, then it happens. If you bring something about, you make it happen. So they are different. Um, practice with phrasal verbs. There's loads of good books. Phrasal verbs in use. Phrasal verbs in use advanced. Those books are very, very good. Um, really learn 100 phrasal verbs. Um, that's a good book as well. And the next one, really learn another 100 phrasal verbs. They're pretty simple, though. I would use the advanced and, and phrasal verbs in use for further study. Um, um, I don't have a schedule for going live at the moment. This is just the first day that I've ever done it. I've got all sorts of wires around here that you can see that um, I'm I'm not really uh, very good at going live yet. If I mean that, were... I I missed that. Um, it sounded like a question about past continuous and present perfect. Um, don't use past continuous to say how long. Use present perfect. I have been living here for three years, not I was living, unless you mean it's finished. Hi, I'm just here to say... Oh, thank you very much, Alp. That's a very kind thing to say. Anything else? I can show you the weather outside quickly while you're while you're. It's really windy today. It's a very 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 windy day. Um, everything, see, all the branches seem to be. Hold on. What is the difference between words familiarised and acquainted? Not much. Uh, yes, it can be. Screw can be a swear word. Certainly, it doesn't have to be because it can mean just use your screwdriver to screw in the screw. Um, but it can be a swear word. Yeah, it can be a very rude word. So I'd be careful how you use it. You know, I mean, screw you would be a rude way of using it, um, something like that. But uh, it's it's not the harshest of swear words. It's pretty soft as far as swear words go. Any other questions? That's a ridiculous question. <laughs> Never heard it, really. Must be some kind of slang that uh, your friends use. Not sure why. Okay, I'll give you another couple of minutes and then I'm gonna uh, stop it and see if I can, if the quality of the video is better than the last one. Um, well, I mean, people ought to correctly use conditionals, but they may not do. Um, maybe I didn't explain, let's say a team is near to qualify, quali qualifying, but needs some specific roles. So the coach says, I don't know if it's better that didn't get the end of that means thought train shorted out what's the difference between say and tell in reported speech you say something but you tell someone um cheerio equals goodbye yeah my mum would still say something like that cheerio yeah suggest you to come is incorrect don't say that <laughs> suggest coming suggest is a gerund verb Yes, they do. They certainly do. Um, not not too formal, though. I like using inversions. They sound very nice. They sound educated. Um, fit in with is similar to settle in. I wouldn't say it's exactly the same because settle in doesn't need an object. How long did it take to settle in? But you wouldn't say how long did it take to fit in with. Um, sorry, Marcelo, I, I will answer your question, but I'm not sure what your question is. Um, are semicolons used? Well, they are in the books that I read. Um, company crew or company's crew? I'd need more information to say which one I would choose um, in that particular um, question. Airline crew w would be more natural than company's crew or, or the ship's crew. Okay, if there's no more questions, then I'll finish. And I might do another one, actually, in five minutes, just because I want to check the other camera, because I'm using a different camera, I've realised. I'm using the front-facing camera um, rather than the back camera. And I want to check that the back camera's working as well um, and that it doesn't have that horrible, blurry picture like the last video did. No, I would not avoid using semicolons. I like semicolons. Semicolons are nice. They make the uh, essay hang together. Um, there's nothing wrong with a semicolon when it's used correctly. It can bring two sentences much closer together. 
Um, lots of differences between he did it and he made it. I think I just explained it in the last common mistakes video. Um, so, I mean, the difference between he does meth and he makes meth is complete. It's massive. Um, one means he does drugs and one means he makes drugs. And so one is create, make is create, do is just do a duty or do a task. Or when you say do drugs, it means actually take drugs. But um, do, it's, it's your, for work, it's homework, housework, office work, do an essay, do an exam do a test, do an exercise, do a report. Anything connected with work, you'll use do. Whereas anything connected with creating something new, you'll use make. Okay, let's finish there then, but I will be back on in about five minutes. Um, I don't really have a favourite film. I mean, I think a lot, mo most TV is a waste of time, including films. I think most films are rubbish. But I do, I quite like learning languages with, and so I can understand everybody watching English films, sure, it's a great way to learn English. Um, I quite like watching films and TV shows in Russian. I've got a few channels, in fact, YouTube channels, which I uh, watch to kind of keep... Um, my reactions um, just to train my reactions and train my listening um, but I quite like the film Brat in uh, in Russia um, it's a good film Brat and Brat Dvar they're good films but um, really TV is TV isn't it most of it's rubbish let's face it um, yes I speak Russian okay I'll be back on in a second um, but I'll be using the other camera so I'll, I will come back on if, it, if people want to hang around and, and uh, come back and ask a, f a few questions Marcelo um, let's say, uh, your questions are very long Marcelo you're gonna have to uh, make them a little bit shorter so that I can think remember I've got to think here and and uh, you know it takes time to think okay let's finish there on that ridiculous question and I'll come back in a few minutes <laughs> 